is going to write today. We're back with a brand new 2 in 1 WWE Elite action figure review on the WWE Elite Series 114 Braun Breaker and Zoe Stark figures. So, we do have a first time in the line. We have Zoe Stark here. I was there in person at San Diego Comic Con when they presented this figure to her. Got to do a photo op with her. CM Punk was there. It was a good time, man. So, I'm finally excited to get this figure in her hands. I feel like that was just yesterday and it was actually months ago. I think it was four or five months ago now. Maybe three, three and a half months ago, something like that, which is absolutely ridiculous. What is time? And then we have Braun Breaker here, which is kind of a repaint. We're going to get into the, of course, nuts and bolts of it. Take a look at some comparisons. Make sure we have it all down here. But if you guys want to grab these figures, you already like what you see. You want to know where to get these. Go over to ringsidecollectibles.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. But we do have Braun Breaker here, and we do have Zoe Stark. Kind of looking like Clay Thompson a little bit. A little Clay Thompson looking. A little beard act. Dude, you can't tell me that it look like Clay Thompson. Standard packaging there. You got a nice image of the man on the side. And then you get the, the wolf man on the back there, which is cool. You got the rest of the figures in the wave. All modern day talent. No flashbacks in this wave, which is absolutely ludicrous, to be honest with you. But we do have Zoe Stark here. Pretty excited about this figure. It looks like it's going to feel really good in hand, but we do have her there. On the side, you get an image of her there. On the back, you get another image of her. And then you do have the bio read with all the good shish on the back there. So we will, of course, unbox the figures, find out what they're all about, man. We're going to put them on the rotating base, see how these figures compare to the rest of our collections, and see if they're actually worth the pickup. Also, Elite 113 should be arriving soon, and we'll get into those reviews. I said the other day, I can't remember the last time we got a later wave than an earlier wave. I can't remember the last time we saw something like that where Elite, you know, 72 arrived before 71 or something like that. Not that that happened, I just can't remember the last time that happened. I feel like I've seen that with Jazzwares. I can't remember the last time that happen with an elite wave but nonetheless man let's crack these figures out of the packaging find out what they're about and see how they turn out here so here we have Elite 114, Braun Breaker, and Zoe Stark out of the packaging. And I'm impressed with the figures so far, man. I mean, I think we have some quality things going on with these figures, of course. We won't know until we break into the super details. There are a few things that I found annoying about the figures already, which we'll get into. But, of course, we're going to dive into one figure. Then we'll run it back and take a closer look at each figure. Or, I say each figure. We're going to do that anyway. But I meant to say the other figure, of course. But let's start things off with the Braun Breaker accessories and Braun Breaker. And then we'll take a look at Zoe Stark's accessories and... And the Zoe Stark. I don't know why I want to call her Zoe Starks, even though it's Zoe Stark. Kind of, it's Tony Stark. It's not Ricky Starks. You know what I mean? So, got to get that handled there. But no, let's man, let's shut the hell up. Let's dive into one figure, and then we'll move it on to the next. So, getting into Braun Breaker's accessories, man. Kind of like Zoe Stark. You don't get a ton here, but I mean, I know with like standard elites, you don't get the most accessories. It's not an Ultimate Edition or anything. But we do get this nice wolf head deal or dog wolf sort of rabid Wolverine style deal going on right here. And it's just a cover. You put it over his head, but I. I do like the sculpt of it. I like how you have the teeth there and everything like that. You have this, I can't remember the damn, is it taxidermy or whatever the hell it's called? And then you will just kind of plop this over the head and you shove it down there and it becomes this hooded monster thing. So, I don't know, kind of cool. It is a rubber piece, so it's not, you know, fur or anything. I don't know how you'd even pull that off. But this looks pretty good. I mean, you know, for a standard just standing there, he could still do an ab crunch and stuff like that with it. It's not that it's completely immovable or something like that. You can still waist swivel. Arm can still go up a little bit there so it's actually quite you can actually still quite pose it with this thing on there but I, I like this accessory kind of a, a different take there outside of that you get mic holding hands with the black hand tape and black pegs and then it's brawn breaker so you got to have fists to break people and beat the hell out of them but it has the same hand tape with the hand tape in black with the black pegs so getting into the brawn breaker figure at the top of the head sculpt it looks like clay thompson all right that's at least what i see i see clay breaker right here brawn thompson but this is a brand new head sculpt we've never seen this head sculpt before to my knowledge He's got the nice fresh cut. He's got a new beard in there, which looks really, really good. I mean, fantastic likeness. How can you not see Braun Breaker in there? It looks just like the character, in my opinion. Like, fantastic done there. I don't like that it connects on this side, and then barely, it, like, almost doesn't. I mean, it really doesn't connect right there. That kind of bothers me. Could have to fix that, but not the biggest deal in the world. Certainly fixable. But then the torso is the same that we've seen in the past. It's kind of that Ryback style with the singlet over it. Super ripped, super jacked. He's got the ripped shoulders, ripped arms which completely viable for Braun Breaker. You have the wolf face right there in the singlet, which is cool. Just a solid black singlet, red eyes with the silhouette of the face. And then you do have dog on the right leg, which is pretty good in red and white. And then on the back, it is plain black. Not the most exciting gear of all time. I definitely like the pink gear and the yellow gear from his chase figure from Elite 104. But you have the black wrist tape, black hand tape, black knee pads, and then he does have the new boot mold. They do have Breaker 
on the side right there and it just looks weird the way it's broken up i don't know why it looks that way it just looks weird to me i don't i don't know what it is like why is there an r on the foot and on the leg there and then the same thing happens on the side so now it says breaker or -er, like bench warmers register -er. but then getting into this guy i found that my ab crunch is a little loose and it's not the best of all time so that's yeah it's not the biggest deal but it's certainly worth noting you got regular head articulation a little bit of pivoting you know the shoulders are all buttery smooth i don't have any issues with shoulder i haven't had an issue with a shoulder in a while man so that's actually quality i love that we don't have shoulder problems kick forward is solid he can kick out too and it doesn't do the snap down thing so that is good that is actually very quality we love to see that he is pinless though so his knees are a little tighter than i would like there it's definitely not as buttery smooth as his first go around which we'll show in just a moment and then he does have the new boots so you are going to be able to rotate this all the way around you know how they do now and then it does go down and up and because it is the new articulation, it does get probably a little bit of a better ankle pivot, but it does kind of have that new boot mold, so they stand out a little there. But in terms of figure comparisons, we do have the Elite 104 Braun Breaker up next to the Elite 114, so it's been 10 waves since we've seen them. Everything is pretty much the exact same as you can see here. Head sculpts are different, and then the paint apps are different, and then the formula is slightly different. This is the Dolph Ziggler legs, so he has a lot better posability over here, a lot better buttery smooth like look at that knee bend right there and then if you come over here on this one you are going to get a little bit more resistance and i don't know man it's something about these new boots com like combined similar to the usos from back in the day man it's not necessarily the pinless leg it's when you combine it with a new foot mold or whatever this newer foot mold that's a little loose and it does, it's just not as quality i much prefer the old version where you had pins in the joints and you could move it around smoother but i don't hate this figure it's just i don't know i i felt like the quality of the Elite 104, and the gear is better than the Elite 104. I don't hate this one. I do like this head sculpt. I think, you know, if you want to do a head swap, actually, if you wanted to buy this and head swap it, this is completely plausible nowadays. Took forever to be implemented, but, oh yeah, that, dude, that looks, oh, dude, that's fire. Look at that right there. You want to do a head swap with the Elite 104 and the Elite 114? That looks very damn good. I would actually highly recommend that. Look at that right there. It looks like an assassin now. Yeah, I like the Elite 104 better than the new one. And then with Zoe Stark, you get some cloth goods, some interchangeable hands, and and you technically get a knee brace, which we'll look at. But let's start things off with the jacket. You have this one arm jacket, half of it in red, half of it in this like, ice blue color that looks pretty damn cool. But I feel like we've seen one arm jackets before. I can't remember the last time we saw one. But it reminds me a lot of the Elite 72 Becky Lynch jacket, just with one sleeve. And then on the back, it does have the Z Stark logo, which is cool. I like this icy blue color with red. It just kind of looks, I don't know, it looks very high quality. Got that faux leather material on there, so it's not the most insane detail of all time but it's nice it's a great cloth goods and i i like it man we get a lot of cloth goods in this entire wave you have the elia robe you have the yeet shirt the we the one shirt tomaso champa's entrance jacket now you have zoe stark so you get all that and a wolf head i think we did pretty good now outside of that we also get a knee brace now we have seen this knee brace mold before but i think you know they don't she doesn't come with it on the packaging so or in the packaging so you're going to have to plop this onto her leg, and then I think it goes on the left knee, but you could put this on other characters, I guess, if you really wanted to, but you just, I don't even know if I'm putting this on right. I have worn knee braces before in the past. Never had, like, ankle injuries. I had a few knee injuries in my career, but for I, I was absolutely blessed to never have ankle problems, but I did deal with some knee stuff, but... I think you put it on like that, and then boom, you have her knee brace on, which, uh, that fits very, very snugly and nice. I think they did a good job there. Yeah, that's pretty damn high quality right there, man. I'm gonna leave that on there. That's nice. It fits very well, too. That's actually quite impressive. Outside of that, you get mic holding hands with no nail polish or anything that we've seen before. And then she also comes with fisted hands, just plain fisted hands to beat the hell out of people, too. So getting into Zoe Stark at the top of the head sculpt, I think it has pretty solid likeness for the most part. I think it does capture her likeness. She's got the blonde hair with the ombre brown coming through right there they did a pretty good job on it overall i'd say it looks like her i don't you know i don't look at it and say who the hell is that so that's good i think that clears all we do have a bunch of newness going on right here in the torso man very cool because it looks unique to her her exact body and proportions really like the top this is all brand new sculpt you have new buckles i'm pretty sure this lower torso is also brand new we've never seen that before got her tattoo on her hip or side right here on the abdomen which looks good all of this looks really really good man you even got the little tie in there. They did an excellent job on the sculpting of this figure. She's also jacked right here on the arms. You have the red with the gray and the light blue that ties into the jacket that we saw earlier. Just very quality overall. 
You have the tights down here on the bottom. Same sort of paneling and, and color scheme going on with the red and light blue, which looks good. Working down, you also have the legs with the Z on the right knee pad, nothing on the left. And then she has the, the black knee brace, of course, with these new kick pads. Pretty sure these are brand new sculpted kick pads. And I think they have brand new articulation on them. And like her, she may be like one of the first WWE Elite women's figures. I think I commented this on her Instagram. I think she has the first Elite women's figure that has ankle pivot. At least it's, it's very close. Because usually they just reuse the same feet mold, the basic boots. I know you have the Ultimate Edition Alexa Bliss and the Ultimate Edition figures, but in terms of just standard elite that don't have those ultimate boots, I think one of this may be one of the first ones with ankle pivot, especially in the new modern era. So just taking you through here, head sculpt's not going to get a ton because, of course, it's just a ball joint, but her arms are buttery smooth. I don't have that Elite 94 Stephanie McMahon problem where, you know, the shoulder won't go all the way down, which was a huge issue for me. She does have the nice size shoulders there. Good upper diaphragm here. It doesn't go 360. You can hear that clicking, so you want to be careful there. Oh, head popped off. Jesus. And then for her legs, she can kick forward nicely. She can go out that way, too. So not any of that crazy problems again, but she doesn't have pinless joints, so that's probably why it's so buttery smooth. But you get the kick pad rotation, and you get ankle pivot right there. And it's weird because it kind of steers off, right? Like You'd like it to be neutral and then square off, but I guess it's not the biggest deal. You still get some good articulation. The ankles go down and up. It feels very quality, and it mo moves around very well. So that is something I can say. I don't feel like the figure is going to break. It's very, you know, it feels good in hand. That's what you want out of these women's elite figures. We've been begging for them to be able to pose like this for a while, so this is a very high quality figure. But as far as some figure comparisons are concerned. And then for your Zoe Stark figure comparisons, we do have the Zoe Stark Elite up next to Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, and Trish Strata. Just some most recent women's figures, just to kind of give you a size comparison between this. She is 5'8. I don't know the heights of all the rest of these. I want to say Rhea is 5'9 or 5'10. Liv Morgan's probably like 5'6. I think Bianca's more of like 5'9, possibly 5'10. I felt like Bianca was like 5'11, though. I could be wrong there. But just to give you a little size comparison so you can kind of know what to expect out of this Zoe Stark compared to some of the higher stars in the women's division. But at the end of the day, I think that about wraps up this 2-in-1 WWE Elite 114 review of Braun Breaker and Zoe Stark and wraps up all of our reviews of WWE Elite Series 114 from top to bottom. Zero flashbacks in this entire wave which totally blew my mind when we saw them. And Elite 113 should, again should arrive any day now. I know that people are starting to receive theirs. But at the end of the day, I think we have seen, you know, this is kind of one of those statement lines. 113 and 114 is kind of like the new standard when it comes to the main elite line. We're going to see the new implementations, the new sculpts, the new boot molds and feet. We'll see that again in 113 as well. But 114 was kind of my first experience with it because we don't have Elite 113 in our hands yet. But overall, I like the wave. We're going to do a My Damn Thoughts episode on it, I think, at the end of the day. We'll, we'll do a My Damn Thoughts episode. We'll rank this set from worst to best and we'll kind of explain all of my thoughts on each figure and everything like that. But overall, these thoughts, I think the Zoe Stark figure is very good, starting off with her figure. Very poseable, very good likeness, good accessories or good, you know, good at least jacket accessory and things like that. I think the Zoe Stark does pose around nice. It has good likeness. I think they did a pretty good job of executing her in action figure form. And then on the Braun Breaker, I think his last two figures, his regular Elite 104 and then his Chase is better. It just feels more quality. It doesn't feel as stiff. It has a much better formula in that in that way. It just has a lot better free form flow. It doesn't feel as tight and, you know, loose at the same time. It's kind of a two for one there. I know that sounds crazy, but its legs are too tight, and then you get the looser feet mold or boots or whatever. It's still a pretty solid figure. I don't really care for the gear either, but I would go with the Elite 104. Even though this head sculpt is nice with the beard and everything, I think I would still prefer his first go around in the pink over this one right here, and I would skip over this one. I don't really care for the wolf head. Even though it is a cool accessory, I just don't have any skin in the game for it. You know what I mean? I don't really have that much of an inclination to pick that up. And so I would just go with the pink one. Even though this gear is okay, it's just not as good as the pink, in my opinion. I like the pink better, but maybe you feel differently. Maybe you want, you know, this rabbit dog wolf style deal going on. But nonetheless, man, that is pretty much going to wrap up our two-in-one review of Elite 114 Zoe Stark and Braun Breaker. Before we get out of here, though, I want to give a huge shout-out to our Patreon members. We got a new sign-up yesterday, man. Stone Cold Steve Ciccone. I think that's how you say the last name. I could have I butchered that, but I think that is it. Is it Ciccone? 
I think that is it. Nonetheless, man, shout out to Steven, absolute boss for signing up, man. I appreciate your patronage and your support, man. That means a lot to me. If you guys want to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Do not forget that, man. Use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, of course, when shopping over there. I greatly appreciate it, but that is going to wrap up today's video and wrap up Elite 114 and the story there, man. Come back for my damn thoughts. And we also have news tomorrow, and then we will start our Elite 113 figure reviews, and we're probably going to start things off with Punk and Tiffany Stratton. Possibly Trick Williams first. We'll have to see exactly what comes of it. I know people are excited about that macho punk though, but I'm getting the hell out, man. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.